Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah Jane and I make a lot of personal finance content here on YouTube, um, such as savings and my debt-free journey. So if that is something that you're interested in, then please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so that you can be a part of my journey here on YouTube. Today I, is going to be a little bit of a different video. I wanted to share how to start a debt-free journey. Now there are so many of these types of videos here on YouTube, but I did want to add in my two cents and what I wanted to recommend to people um, from my past year of a debt-free journey. I have to go ahead and apologize if you hear any background noises. Um, there is a little bit of construction going on and they're not leaving anytime soon. But this is the only time I had to film, so I apologize in advance. Uh, I've broken this video up into five different steps um, and the five steps that I recommend with starting a debt-free journey. So um, if you already know a certain part, then feel free to skip ahead, um, but let's go ahead and get started. So the first two things fall in line similarly with the Dave Ramsey's baby steps. Um, if you're not familiar with him, I'm not gonna go through each step, there's seven steps, um, and the first two of my steps that I'm recommending align with his, which is number one, is to have $1,000 in your emergency fund. Um, this can be sort of controversial, some people want to have more, uh, which is totally understandable and totally fine. Uh, if you want to have five thousand, ten thousand. However, if your if your goal is to actually get out of debt quickly, then actually, um, if you have too much money in your savings, it can be helpful to use some of that to go towards your debt because interest is accruing. But anyways, at least putting a thousand dollars into your emergencies fund so that if something bad happens or you need extra money because an emergency pops up, you have that money in your savings account. So always having some type, type of emergency fund um, is very helpful and $1,000 is usually the minimum that people will put into an emergency fund. Step number two, so aligning your debts from your smallest debt to your largest debt um, and this can kind of be the hard part for some people is to actually take a look at how much money you owe a bank or you know student loans or whatever whatever your debts are actually like taking a step back and calculating all that um but doing that is so important because it gives you your starting point so whether it's just a couple hundred dollars on a credit card and then you have like an auto loan or an, and then you have maybe student loans whatever your debts are put those numbers down write them down and calculate them and then from here you can decide which method you want to use I prefer to follow Dave Ramsey's method, which is to tackle your smallest debt first because as you tackle each debt, once you finish paying off one debt, you can use that money that you used to pay towards that one debt to roll over and snowball into your next debt. Um, I prefer this method. Other people prefer what's called the avalanche method, which um, I could be defining this incorrectly, but I'm pretty sure that's when you attack your highest interest rate first instead of the highest volume first. So once again, I prefer the previous method, but ch choosing whichever method is going to work for you and deciding that's the tactic that you're going to take to tackle your debt. So now that we've talked about having an emergency fund and then laying out your debts and figuring out which one you're going to tackle first, with whichever tactic. Uh, third is to establish a budget. It's really, really challenging to tackle debt if you don't really know where your money is going. Um, it's definitely a game changer to establish a budget, which there are so many videos on how to establish a budget and I'm not going to get into them here because that would make this video exceptionally lengthy. Um, but it really comes down to four things. It's one, figuring out your fixed expenses, which are your bills. So figuring out what money is coming into your account from your job and then figuring out how much of that money is going towards your bills how much of that money is going towards your minimum payment towards your debts then how much money is going into your variable expenses such as groceries and transportation and then how much money can you put extra towards your debts and if it's not a lot 
um, that actually leads me into my fourth step which is to get a side hustle or extra income so this I think for a lot of people including myself when I first started my debt free journey is kind of like I don't know how to make extra money I don't know what is gonna work like what should I do and there are so many ways to make extra income my three main ways that I make extra income one was through Rover which is a dog walking servicing app I actually made like a lot of money from that um, I also have a photography side business that gets me a lot of extra money and then I also make money from YouTube right so those are my three extra income that I make throughout the year, but there's so many other ways. I mean, you could start an Etsy shop, you can participate in focus groups, those actually pay out really well. Um, you can sell and flip things. There's so many ways that you can make extra money. So figuring out which way you feel comfortable making extra money and start doing that. And then that extra money then gets put towards your debt. That's what I did for my debt-free journey when I started because at the time I wasn't making as much for my nine to five as I am now and I did not have extra income to throw towards my debt. So I did a ton of side hustles and all of that contributed extra money towards my debt. And last but not least is to track your progress. Um, sometimes some people can forget about this part, but this is like what keeps you accountable when you're on a debt free journey and that and what can really help motivate you. Um, so similar to losing weight, um, you step on the scale, you get your measurements and then as time progresses, you check in and track your progress. Think of that the same way with your debt free journey. So I prefer to use an Excel sheet and there are three main things that are the basics that you should be tracking. First of all, you're starting total debt. Where are you starting? That number from number, step number two that we talked about, calculating all your debts, calculate that first. That needs to be in your debt tracker. Second, you can do this either monthly or weekly or both. I do both, but how much debt you've paid off. Um, weekly debt payoff, monthly debt payoff. How much money you are throwing at your debt needs to be tracked um and then third is how much debt is there left to pay and that number is going to be different than how much you've thrown at your debt because of interest so for example if you are throwing 300 dollars towards your debt but at the end of the month you're receiving like 120 dollars in interest um how much you're paying towards debt and how much debt is left to pay off are going to be two different numbers so tracking those three numbers are the bare minimum that you should be putting into your debt free tracker within your tracker you should also set milestone goals uh, and I recommend this because a lot of times when you start a debt free journey it's probably because you have quite a bit of debt um, and it can seem very overwhelming and as you're knocking knocking out some of your smaller debts if you start approaching some of your bigger ones it can feel really overwhelming and like you're not getting anywhere um, and this is where setting milestones is really really helpful because um, they're little wins in your journey. So kind of like how if you're, I'm going to relate this back to weight loss. If you're on a weight loss journey and overall you're trying to lose 50 pounds, but like at every 10 pound mark that you lose, you kind of like celebrate. You're like, yes, I lost 10 pounds. That was a milestone for me. Same thing with your debt free journey. Let's say you have $100,000 of debt that you need to pay off and breaking up that milestone of every 10K celebrating can really help you get ahead and like feel like you're making progress so whatever milestone works for you figure that out for me i've had monetary milestones and i've had time milestones so before um i had a milestone of paying off two thousand extra dollar towards my car but then i ended up making an additional milestone and i an aspirational goal of paying it off by christmas so whether that's time or money, whatever those milestones are, figure those out and make sure that you annotate them and that you're tracking them so that way you can feel those little wins on this long journey. Those are my five steps towards starting a debt-free journey. I hope this video was helpful for someone. I remember when I started my debt-free journey, I was feeling very overwhelmed and there was so much content out there and I was just trying to watch and read as much content as I could find. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up 
and subscribe because it really helps support my channel. Let me know in the comments below if you are on a debt-free journey and if you are doing anything um, that I have not already said in this video. I would love for this uh, channel to be a place where people can share their wins and loses and, you know, have a community here. So I'll talk to you guys in another video. Bye.